Hey guys, Joe here, and today we are taking a look at the long-promised Taffington Boathouse. Thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, please consider getting subscribed down below. Also, consider using my Amazon affiliate link. It will help the channel grow greatly, as well as allow me to make better content and get better equipment for the channel. For those of you new to this series, I am going through the world of Fallout 4 and rebuilding settlements in a more modern flair. Now I know there was a divergence in the Fallout universe after World War II and technology kind of stopped because Fallout universe never actually discovered microprocessors. That's why everything has Nixie tubes and the way computers are built are massive and huge and heavy. Well, I decided to go ahead and rebuild as many of the settlements as you can using the radiant quests you get from Preston Garvey as well as just helping out random settlers. I've already done Red Rocket Truck Stop, I've done Overland Station, and I've done Sanctuary Hills which is the original player home. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Taffington Boathouse. Let's go ahead and pop up in the sky and we'll give you an aerial view of the entire settlement. It's not as big a settlement as say Red Rocket even but it is pretty cool in the layout because you're basically limited to as you can see a pretty narrow swath of land. I'm going to go ahead and drop back in and that will allow us to open the menu for the borders of the settlement so I can show you that I actually have exceeded them in many places. Also, because a subscriber asked, I am going to list all of the mods I use to build these settlements in the description below. You can copy and paste it and then you'll have an idea on what to look for. A lot of them came from the main mod menu in the game itself. Some of them came from Nexus Mod Manager. I prefer to use Nexus Mod Manager because it, you can also use Vortex mod manager to install them automatically. I tend to not use ones I need to manually install and with as many options as there are you really don't need to. But first let me show you that yes many of my buildings are outside the actual borders of the settlement. I could have just extended the borders of the settlement but I didn't want to try to remember what the name of the mod was so I just used a trick that I learned which is if you just pick up the item, place it inside the border, you can then put it back outside the border and manipulate it. All these lamps and posts and everything were first built here and then I drug them out there. So it did take quite a while to build this settlement when a lot of it is outside of the borders. Starting over here at what I consider the entrance as you come from the south, let's take a look at the stats for this settlement. There's only nine people figure it's just a skeleton staff and there are some other people I still need to get for other places in the settlement that we will talk about. 18 food which is more than enough. 80 water provided by two water pumps. 740 power. I like each building to be independently powered so they don't have to rely on each other. Defense is 198 which is more than enough and 20 beds and as you can see happiness is at 85 even though I do a lot of mods and cheats in my game I do not cheat with my settlement happiness level but as you can see it's well defended all the corners have machine gun turrets laser turrets spotlights and a few places have the upgraded PTRS-1 firearms that's a 20 millimeter cannon those take 16 energy each to use, so while they are very power hungry, they are also very deadly. Let's start here with what I call shop row, because it's mostly shops. You have the general store, the weapon store, which has guns and ammo of course, and your clothing store. These are all manned. I don't know where that guy went because it's only 9 o'clock in the morning, but apparently he's off doing something. You have the clinic and then some showers. Let's go ahead and we'll start down here at the general store and the first thing you'll see is that the building looks pristine. That's because one of the mods I used was the one that repairs your warehouse and your barns. It is sitting on top of the repaired concrete floors so I did have to put steps going inside otherwise it would have been a little awkward. 
Going inside, you will see that there is an individual bathroom for each building. Shower stall, sink stall, and toilet. They all work. More shopping area, so they have more of the food, the tools, and resources you'd want sitting there along with some books and some decorations. I like to keep each merchant in their own building with their own living quarters because it helps keep them nav meshed correctly. So around the corner I put up some curtains and a half wall in order to create a kind of private area with a bed and a dresser. I do need to install the mod that quiets down your security because that would drive me nuts if I had to live next to those weapons all day long. The guns and ammo dealer. He has a weapons workbench, modern firearms prototype vending machine, which is also where the, uh, pardon me, where the vest and all the modern guns that I use in the game come from, and an ammunition workbench. Tool chest and a garbage can, and then using Mad Kia, which is another mod, I installed a bedroom divider. Figure this guy doesn't need as much private space because I figured these are for him to be using for the most part. His bathroom is kind of the same, but it does have the shower tub versus the shower stall. And out here, using do-it-yourself, I filled up his counter and put some weapons on display, and I think that looks good. Over in the clothing area, stocked up his counter, put various outfits out there, figured this was all his back stock, and his bathroom is in here, very similar to the weapons dealer. I was able to find enough room to put a desk down in this guy's residence though. Coming out of there, the next building over is the clinic. The clinic is usually staffed by three people in my builds because you have somebody manning the main clinic desk, the surgeon chair, and the full raptor which came with Vault Tech Workshop. However, I still need to get settlers and reassign them to these stations. That's the first floor of the clinic. And since I like to keep my settlers that are assigned near their stations, I built a second level, even though this is technically a two and a half story building, technically, not technically, like I just said, I apologize. And there are beds for each person. This wire is non-deletable. I've tried many a time. I can't select it. I can't delete it. I can't mark for delete. It's just there. It's something you have to deal with sometimes in these games when you're modding them. But yes, one bed for each person, a dresser, a lamp, and a footlocker. I use these accommodations for virtually everybody in every settlement because, well, it's very easy to do. It still gives them a modicum of individuality. And eventually when I get all of the settlements built, I'll come back and decorate each person's personal belongings. This settlement being the size it is, is able to run at 1440p and 60 FPS, which makes me happy because some of the settlements kind of run like poop. They do have a desk up here so they can do some homework or reading on medical things. I do need to put a bookshelf in here with some medical books. And then the bathroom, which is two tubs and a toilet. This is the highest point in the settlement outside of over there, so I didn't feel the need to block off those windows, although I could have with another half wall. There are a couple places in this settlement where I wound up using concrete walls inside the buildings. It was an unfortunate thing that I was forced to do because the barn walls are either too big, too tall, or just will not snap together even with place everything. Looks a little ugly, but again, compromises must be made. For the other residents of the settlement who don't have individual bathrooms, hint hint spoiler, I installed a shower building. This is a custom made building, even though it does look like a standard barn building from the outside. It's custom made using barn pieces and inside I used toilet stalls as shower stalls. So in each shower stall there is a functional shower, soap, and a towel rack. So they can come in here they have their own lights above each station as well as the lights in the ceiling. So they can come in here, grab a towel, take a shower, clean off. A couple of the shower stalls have double towel racks. That was just by choice. And this last one, unfortunately, wasn't quite wide enough for the full tower, tower, the full shower stall. So I wound up just using a curtain for this one. But still, plenty of showers because 
every resident doesn't need to come in at the exact same damn time. Over here near the other side there is more security and the farm area. These are part of the mods that I used in which these generate three food each. They're just mute fruit plants or trees but they sit in planters that you can basically plant anywhere. It looks better in my opinion than just planting them into concrete. In order to level out each area there are some elevation changes although only two major ones from the first level you come down here this is just kind of a walking area you can see the water pumps I could have done another water tower but I figured the water pumps looked more natural here since it's literally on the water that blood will never go away those are my bullet holes sorry I got bored and over here you have a little outdoor bar. It is manned and again using place everywhere I push some light bulbs through the ceiling and they're hidden by the posts for the sign so that you can't tell they're there. And now they light up that area as well as a light under each awning for each table. So some seating area there. You can also see that I repaired the roofs of the main house I completely replaced the main or the boat house which was kind of part of the name of the building but it needed to go it was pretty nasty coming down here this is the main elevation change that was kind of annoying to work with because I had to find a way to create it while still allowing the NPCs to move through because NPCs are stupid I didn't do anything to the deck, I just removed all the rails because most of them were broken and I wanted to have a uniform look all the way around and wide open seemed to work fine. I did replace one piece of wall and I think it fits together well from the outside, although inside it's a different texture, there was nothing I could do there, and I put a barber's chair outside. We'll check out these boats in a moment. Let's go inside the main building. And on the first floor here you have a check-in area with a nice desk computer and desk fan. I figure people come in here and they can check in and rent a bed for a day, an hour, whatever the case may be. There are a couple of safes so they can put their weapons and bottle caps and not fear for them being stolen. Over here I put just a nice little reading area, a couple of nice couches, a rug, and a lot of books and decorations so residents and visitors can come in here and sit down and have a nice conversation and just relax. In here is the kitchen, one desk or table, pardon me, this is the original table with the settlement. These ones were added later. This is the modular kitchen and it does work so the stove can craft, the sink works as well as the refrigerator. For electricity I use these fuse boxes that have a huge radius. It's basically a wireless power box and I love them because they work great. That's the first floor of the building. I could have just filled it up with residence beds and created fake walls and all that good stuff but I wanted to preserve some of the settlement. Coming up the stairs there are some sleeping quarters so you have a few beds up here and they're all sparsely decorated, pretty much all the same, dresser, bed, footlocker, with a cabinet over the normal area. However, there are some textures or decals that will never go away. These were created because of an in-game storyline that you cannot delete, no matter what you do. If you try to select it and mark for delete, you actually delete the whole house, and I didn't want to do that. I did have to create a bathroom, that's why there's this indoor concrete area so that people would have w at least one bathroom on this level. Coming over here to the side, as I said, I completely replaced the boathouse. This is actually the same width as the original boathouse. However, it is much taller and it has a lot more room inside because the original one had a lot of water in here. There is a little clipping issue. I think I have a couple of doubled floor textures. I'll have to fix those later. But as you can see, it's another one of the buildings I like to build that's two and a half stories tall rather than just two stories tall so there's more room for things to be built plus the warehouse walls are actually one and a half walls tall say that five times fast 
In here there's a bathroom with two showers and a toilet along with a sink and a mirror. And another functioning kitchen, however this is actually all individual pieces snapped together. So counters, fridge, stove, and sink. Laid out slightly different, it was the only way I could get it to fit. And there is fluorescent lighting and a main ceiling fan. Figured it's a kitchen, it should have better lighting. Underneath the stairs there was really nothing to put there so I put some containers. Figured they could put food from the crops or clothes or tools or whatever they want in those bins. Coming up here to the top level, I have one, two, three, and four beds. I was able to give them a desk and then each one has a dresser except for this last one which unfortunately due to the stairs didn't have enough room so I put a locker. Works the same. Using place everywhere I shrank the lamps so that they kept more real estate here on the nightstands to put their personal belongings and I figure they can do that as well as I installed do-it-yourself mods so that I could put these low-level shelves with decorations. There are banisters back here but I still wanted something here for them. Originally I was going to put couches but it didn't make sense to have seven seats for four beds. And that brings us to the piece de resistance for this settlement and that is the actual boat part of the Taffington Boathouse. And this is what actually took me a while because originally all I did was the buildings. The main building and then those shop buildings up there and I thought about it and the name Boathouse implies that there should be boats even though it is 200 years after the nukes fell but I wanted to do something so what I did was using the place everywhere mod and breaking the boundaries of the settlement I laid down some boats and now they are actually being used by the residents for both residences and something you'll see at the end the first one I laid down was this one which is the farthest out and as you can see there is security on the boats themselves pointing towards that area up there is some enemy encampments that there's nothing I can do about unless I go and kill everybody but then they tend to respawn so I just laid a lot of defense but in here I put concrete walls for a little bit of protection rug bed and a dresser these took quite a while because you actually, as I said before, have to place inside the boundary and then drag them physically over. Each one has a table with an awning and a light and usually has a nice deck going between the boats. I think there's one place where there isn't. But each one's laid out the same. Bed, dresser, and a rug with concrete walls and a door. These are not currently assigned. They're available for rent, for parties, and whatnot. This is one of the few that actually just has a curtain. Not sure why I did that. I kind of like that better. I may go back and do that for most of them. But as you come across, you can see they're all exactly the same. Except this one, which is missing the dresser. Oh, I'll fix that later. But I also laid down this deck so that you can walk around to this last boat here, which is a little bit different because this boat is a bar. So I have two bars in the settlement, however nobody really comes here because technically it is outside the settlement boundaries and that guy won't actually climb up into the boat I think because you have to walk around this way to get to it. I may have to move the stairs so they clip onto this side, but I don't want to do that because it would destroy my tables that I have clipped through the rails of the boat. So now you have some place to put your drinks. Inside here, this is not a bedroom, this is a kitchen. So you have a drink station that's powered a fridge, sink, and stove. That's all you really need. So that's about it for Taffington Boathouse. I think it came out well. If you agree, don't forget to hit the like button down below. Don't forget to get subscribed. Also consider using my Amazon affiliate link. Anything you can do to help the channel grow would be greatly appreciated. That way I can get better equipment to make even better videos in the future. Comments and questions, feel free to leave those down below. Don't forget to come back to see the next video. I'm not 100% sure which settlement it's going to be. Once I figure that out, I will post it here in a post as well as on Instagram since I'm using that now. I'm going to get out of here. It's 1 o'clock in the morning and I'm very tired. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.